Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome, as always, Thursday night. So we're going to have a bit of a chat about something topical. And what we're going to talk about is very topical. And looking at the, just having a quick glance through the press before we started. Uh, yeah, headline after headline after headline. We are getting somewhere, are we? we we'll find out in a few minutes with Brexit. Brexit is in the news. Um, very much so. And we are getting towards crunch time. December 31st, as you probably know, we have to have a deal by then. And we're in the middle of that sort of rankling uh, about that deal and what that deal will be. Um, and this is the post-leaving trade deal that we we officially left last year. We're now leaving we know we have until the end of this year to agree a trade deal or go to wto rules so if all of that is um double dutch to you let's clarify a little bit we've got brian sylvester with us this evening and i know a lot of you um love it when brian comes i think we'll have brian on, on a regular basis actually if he'll agree to it um Brian, welcome hi i'm me how are you i'm fine thanks Good, good. I I love your Christmas job. I assume this is a a Santa Claus weird thing. We've got. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I've got myself a Christmas job for this year as well. Well done. I, I don't usually. I think it might be my first actually. But anyway, okay, Brian. Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. We know how you how strongly you feel about Brexit. Um, let's get straight straight to it. I mean, what's your What's going on? Well, as always, uh, what we've got now is yet more theatre. It's just the charade. Uh, they're just playing to the gallery. We, we've got to, Boris going over to Europe uh, tonight, I believe, uh, to further discussions. Uh, but um, it's, it's all been cut and dried a long time ago. If you just go back until just examine how this happened. Uh, if you go back to October of last year, and that's before the general election, but Boris signed up to a god-awful deal, uh, which wasn't a lot different to Mrs May's deal. And uh, Don't forget that Boris voted twice against Mrs May's deal. He, he voted the third time for it. But it was an awful deal. Um, and um, he signed up to it in October last year. Um, he then had the goal uh, to go into the general election and say, vote for me and uh, we'll get Brexit done. Uh, get Brexit done was the slogan, and that, quite frankly, was the slogan that got him elected, that got him the 18 majority. It was all a total, absolute lie, uh, because if you examine what was in uh, that agreement, um, it's quite clear that it, it was a sellout, and um, um, because of that deal with the EU, we, in effect, remain a colony of the EU for evermore. And, and people say, well, surely not. Well, I'm afraid it is. Um, and it's interesting that uh, when that deal was done in October last year, uh, the Brexit Party actually did a very good document um, on, and it's still on their website. And if you if you look at, look it up on, on Google um, and, and just put in Google, um, just read this Brexit Party, uh, there's a very, very good examination of why it was such a god-awful deal. Um, and, and it examines every aspect from fishing to the law to immigration, the lot. Um, and it, it is a, an awful deal. Um, but Boris signed up to it. He, he, he got it through the general election basically because the media were not, did not question it. They should, certainly should have questioned it. And the, and the opposition, so-called opposition, uh, just allowed him to get away with it. Um, strangely, very strangely. Um, uh, because uh, that is what he did. And and so he got his majority. Um, he used his majority in January of this year um, to pass through this withdrawal um, treaty, uh, which is now, it is a treaty now. It's, it passed through Parliament. Uh, he got it through no problem whatsoever. Um, and it's all been cut and dried. And, and, and all this charade that's going on now uh, is totally meaningless because uh, in the agreement that Boris signed up to, uh, he signed up so that if there was any disagreement at the end of the day, and we're coming near to the end of the day, uh, those disagreements would be sorted out by the European Court. No, it's obvious if it goes to the European Court, they aren't going to come down on our side. So the European Union have got all the cards. 
they they don't they don't have to negotiate with any seriousness at all. And and what we're seeing in the press saying where Boris is standing up for the for the Brits and you know we we, we won't be trod on by the Europeans. It's all nonsense because he's already he's already sold the pass. He's already done it. Um, and and so uh, that's where we are now. In my view, it's not too late um, to change. Um, uh, what he should do, quite clearly, is go for no deal. Uh, to do that, he needs to actually dump the withdrawal treaty entirely, totally in the bin. Um, and uh, if he did that, he can go for no deal. And I, I'm I'm absolutely sure that the uh, European Union will still will come running quite soon after that uh, because they, they don't really want no deal because they will be the big losers. And we might want to talk about that uh, later. Um, but that's that's the situation. We should go for no deal. We should dump the withdrawal treaty. Not too late to do it. I don't think Boris will do it. But if anybody wants to contact their MP and, and tell them, that's what they should be telling them because the, these <laughs> the 17.4 17 point, uh, 17 million who, who voted for uh, for Brexit, they're being duped. Again, they're being duped. It's, it's very sad. So how do we dump the withdrawal agreement? It was by Parliament. First of all, reminder of what's the worst thing or what are the worst things in the withdrawal agreement, to your mind? And how can they get rid of it? How can we, would it, another act of Parliament? What, what do we, how would we just cancel that out? Well, you, you may have seen recently where Boris uh, had started to actually uh, take out part of the withdrawal treaty. Even then, there was a lot, a lot of fuss about, oh, you can't, it's an international treaty, you can't change an international treaty. Well, of course, you can change an international treaty. International treaties are changed all the time. Uh, countries across the world do it. Even the European Union do it and done it many times. So it's nonsense to say you can't change it. You can change it. Um, but they, they did change a small part of it, um, and that, that was in relation to Northern Ireland, which is all well and good. And, you know, I welcome that, but it needs to go much, much further. So it can be done, um, uh, but uh, it'd be unusual, but it can be done. Uh, and, and what is amazing, totally amazing, is that you get all these Tory MPs now, um, people like Redwood, who, who stood previously to be the leader of the Tory party and people like Duncan Smith who was the leader of the Tory party um, they're coming out now saying oh well Boris must stand firm and he, he mustn't give way and we, we must make sure that we we can trade wherever we want to trade and um, and we mustn't be restricted in any way by the European Union when they know they signed up for it they voted for this very withdrawal treaty which is now going to stop us uh, doing the deals that we need to do so tell us about that. I mean, what is, say, if Boris wants to take part out of the withdrawal agreement, as you said, what parts would you take out? I'd just, just take out the whole withdrawal treaty, just dump it, just put it in, put it in the bin. Um, because what you've got to realise, basically, if we did that, um, we could then say to the EU, right, OK, we've got no deal, um, we'll trade, um, and uh, if you want to put tariffs on, we'll put tariffs on. But, but what people don't understand and certainly the media hasn't helped with this um deliberately because the media are not in favor of uh, brexit they never have been never will be um they they want to they want us to stay in and so does the opposition so so they're covering up for boris because they want us to stay in and in effect what boris is doing is keeping us in amazingly strangely that's what he's doing um and but in reality uh, if the media were honest, they would say, well, OK, let's, let's examine this, this no deal proposal. Let, let's have a look at it. Um, if you look at it, uh, around about £80 billion um, deficit uh, on trade with the EU. And what that means is that w we have an £80 billion deficit with the EU. £80 billion, not million, £80 billion. That's 80,000 million deficit a year. Now, you, that takes some getting your head round 80,000 million deficit a year with the EU and that means that we buy 80 80,000 million uh, um, more from the EU than what we sell to the EU each year it's a colossal amount of money now mm. now if if uh, we put say say a 10% uh, tariff on on that on that trade so that would that would give us around about 8 billion Eight thousand million a year, a year that is um, eight thousand million. Now, if you work that out, for example, uh, eight thousand million, eight billion is a lot of money. 
And, and if you divide that by the 650 MPs that are in, in Parliament, that would give each constituency £12 million a year, just from just from the tariffs from the EU trade. Now, I'd like £12 million for Crew and Nantrix. You'd like £12 million for Hartlepool. Um, we, we would love that sort of money. So we're talking about big sums of money. Now, so if we had um, this 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 uh, tariffs with the EU, they they would be the big losers. They would be paying um, this this eight billion a year uh, in tariffs. Now, they wouldn't put up with that for much for long. Uh, and certainly the, the the manufacturer, the car manufacturers, the producers in the EU, they would soon be knocking on the doors of their government and saying, "Come on, you got to stop this." Um, and, and very soon we would have a, a free trade agreement with the with the EU. Um, so that, that's the way forward. It's always always has been the way forward. Um, but but what we've come to realise, and I realised a long time ago, and more people are now, is that Boris was always a he was a fake Brexiteer. He's never never been a true Brexiteer. He's a fake Brexiteer, um, and um, he's been allowed to get away with it up to now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's a, he's a true anything, to be honest. No, no, no. So he's, 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 a, he's a blatant liar. He, 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 the, more you see, the more you see the man, he's mm. a blatant total liar. Mm. And he's taking up all these trendy causes as well. This the green thing. He's really running with that. Um, and and you, it, it's, it, it's, all just, it's all just, like you said at the start, theatre. So tell us, the arrangements that are being made now, you're saying are, are a, a, a theatre. What is it about the withdrawal agreement that makes it that these, that we, that this, these, these negotiations? Yeah, well, well on, yeah, but well, well, what, what they, the, the, the sort of words they're using, they need to have a level playing field. That, that, yeah. and, and there's a lot within that. And, and, and what they're saying, what they mean by a level playing field is that um, there's no way that we can actually compete properly with the EU. We, we can't have a situation uh, where we take advantage of, of being outside the EU uh, and therefore we've got to keep our tariffs uh, and, and our non-tariff uh, barriers virtually the same as the EU. So the, the big advantage, the big advantage of leaving the EU, which is that we can trade freely with the world, that's going to be taken away from us because we're going to say, well, sorry, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to tie it in with what the EU are doing. Um, and, and again, what you've got to realise is that the EU is a protection market for big business within the EU. That's what it always has been. Uh, that's why, why big business is so keen on it. And it is a protection market because what it means is big business in the EU, uh, they can trade within the EU and, and they don't have competition from outside because of the sometimes enormous tariffs from uh, imports coming into the EU from outside. Uh, and so, uh, for example, food, for example, you know, we, we could buy food a lot cheaper from outside the EU, but we can't because because they've got to put tariffs on it. Uh, and so the cost of living could be a lot cheaper for uh, British citizens um, if we were fully outside the EU. But but th th that's, the, that's the problem. Um, and uh, this is going to remain unless Boris does something quite drastic. And, of course, the other, another aspect of that is that if we did, didn't did put such high tariffs on products from outside the EU, perhaps uh, some of the poorer countries might be able to trade their way out of poverty rather than... Um, it's, it's another issue, but it's, it's an important one. So tell us about WTO rules. So we're hearing we, if we don't get a deal by 31st of December, we're going to WTO rules. Explain, explain that. What is it? What would that mean? I mean? It has regulations and rules of its own. Yeah, well, it, it would mean in round about, uh, on average, around about 10% uh, tariffs, um, and uh, which, which is not horrendous. But in, in terms of the deficit that we've got with the EU, it, it would mean that we would be the big beneficiaries from those tariffs, uh, as I said earlier, about £8 billion. Um, so um, it's... Um, it, it, we've nothing to fear uh, from 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 tariffs, but I I don't imagine that um, as I said that you know if tariffs were introduced um, that they would last so long because the EU would um, would soon come knocking saying uh, we want a free trade deal. But the, 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 the other the other thing is which is is come out in the last few days is the way that Northern Ireland's been treated is is appalling um, because Boris went over to Northern Ireland and, and he said. Uh, Nobody, no prime minister would ever put a 
put a border down the uh, the Irish Sea, and that's precisely what he's done. Um, and um, there's going to now going to be a presence, an EU presence in Northern Ireland after this uh, this agreement. And we're now being told, um, and the, the uh, Northern Ireland is being treated terribly. If I was Northern Irish, I, I'd, I'd be spitting mad um, because what what in effect he's done. Um, he separated Northern Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom. It's part of the United Kingdom, but he's he separated it off in this deal, and in effect, he, he's put Northern Ireland almost in the, the, the waiting room for United Ireland, which is incredible what he's done. And it's, 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 especially, especially because <laughs> he is the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. How has he done that, Brian? What's he done with Northern Ireland specifically? He's put a border down the Irish Sea. Is there customs checks coming over? Yeah, customs checks, yeah. There's, so there'll be, there'll be customs checks between... So goods going from, from Great Britain into Northern Ireland and, and uh, Northern Ireland to Great Britain, there'll be checks. So this is this is, this is is wrong. We are United Kingdom. We, we, we can't have uh, virtually have borders across uh, the, the, the four countries of the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So where we are with the with the sticking points, you mentioned the level playing field. Now, what are the EU wants us all offering or, or working on the same standards and regulations in terms of environmentalism, workers' rights, and state aid, particularly? They want us all because they don't want us to compete. Is essentially what it is. What are they offering us in exchange for the level playing field? Is, is this the access to the market? Well, well, yeah, because that, that's what it is. At the moment, we have free trade with the EU because we, we are, we are we, although we're, we're in the transition year, we, you know, we still have the free trade element of, of that. Um, and um, so that is the advantage of that. But, you know, as I said earlier, I don't see any difficulty in getting a free trade deal. If we played our cards correctly, as we should have done, but we've never done, since the uh, since the uh, um, referendum in 2016, oh, you know, four and a half years ago, it's amazing. Four and a half years ago, and we're still not out. And and from from the way it's looking, the way it's looking, we're not going to be out. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, virtually a colony of the EU, uh, and we'll actually be worse off because we, we won't have any members of the European Parliament. Uh, we won't have any commissioners. We won't have any say. But we still have to do what they tell us to do. Now, what what government, what prime minister would sign us up to that? Well, his name is Boris Johnson. And do you know, Brian, that's what we were sort of warned about by Remainers. That's what <laughs> they said would happen. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. They were saying if, we, if we leave the EU, we'll, we'll still have to obey their rules and regulations because we're in Europe. But we won't have any say at the table. Ironically, yeah. the Remainers have, have predicted predicted rightly. The other one is fishing. I mean, what is what are they offering us? What do we get? Is it is it the exchange of the right to fish in other fishing waters? Is that <laughs> an exchange? Because I think we'd rather UK's fish, fishing waters to belong to the UK. Right? I mean, that's that's a reasonable request, isn't it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and and it, why should we give away any of our fishing waters? No, there's no need to. Um, we've got tremendous fishing waters, and we gave it away when we joined. We should now get it back. Um, but you can see the way this is going. We're going to end up uh, where the EU will still be fishing to a great extent within our waters, which should never be allowed. Yeah, and, and the 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 offer, the the quid pro quo of you can you can fish in European waters. Well, there's no, it's whatever about access to the market. Which, like you say, I completely agree. If we held our nerve, they would give us access to the market, and I think that's the message the Prime Minister has to give. Yeah, Look, yeah, yeah. We have power here. What we, we we must hold on there, which is yeah. of course not the, the message that he's going to give. But, but the, 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 other, the other thing which needs to be raised at, at this point, because yet again you you got Nigel Farage coming up, popping up like he, he does. He, he goes away, then he pops up, um, and up he pops, and he says, "Oh well, we, we mustn't sell out to the EU. We must watch Boris and all this sort of stuff." Um, well, again, if you examine what what Farage did, it's scandalous what Farage did. Um, he, he set up the Brexit Party in, in 2019. He won the European elections. Um, he, he, he got all these candidates signed up to stand in the uh, general election. And then he, he stood down every Brexit Party candidate in, in every Tory-held seat, over 300 seats. And that allowed Boris 
to um, to get his huge majority of, of of eighty. Now, as I said earlier, the Brexit Party at least did one good thing that they pointed out that the the deal that that uh, Boris signed up to was an awful deal. Um, but despite that, despite that, Farage allowed allowed Boris to get his majority, and and Farage knew full well that if Boris got his majority, he would he would just make this withdrawal treaty law, which he did, um, and and that means in effect um, no Brexit. So there there you have the Brexit party enabling no Brexit. How about that? Now, now a lot, a lot of people will say you're being fanciful there, Brian. Well, uh, examine, no. ex examine the facts. Sure. Examine the facts. Uh, he, he set up the Brexit Party with the one intention to deliver Brexit, and he ended up by allowing Boris to not deliver Brexit. That's what happened. That was, that's what happened. And 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 and, and now Farage. He's got the goal to say, "Oh, now we're going to set up this reform party, and we're going to we're going to reform the country and all this sort of stuff." Yeah, the man can't be trusted. No, I agree. I agree. And I do agree with your analysis of it. That is what he did. He allowed that to happen, knowing full well it wasn't Brexit. I mean, what, who can expect? Maybe it's maybe he wanted a reason to keep coming back, Brian. Keep well, popping well, his head. Well, is, is, is he controlled opposition? Is he, is he controlled opposition? You, you begin to wonder, don't you? You, you, well, you, you begin to wonder whether, whether it, <laughs> even Keir Starmer's controlled opposition. You, oh, oh, go on. Tell us about that. What's your view on Chris Starmer, Brian? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> he's he's first of all he's the most boring politician ever. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he'll 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 send the country to sleep. Um, and so he, he he's absolutely is utter total bore. Um, but <laughs> but but he is no opposition. If you look at, at the present time, there's no opposition to no. To, to Boris on on this COVID nonsense. Um, on the lockdowns, on the lockdowns, all all uh, Starmer says is, "Oh well, we should have locked down earlier, or it should have locked down longer, or whatever." He, he doesn't say, "Let's end the lockdown. Let, let's have some alternative to this nonsense policy." Oh no, uh, we, we, you know, the government should do it a bit more. I agree with what the government does, but it should have done it sooner. You know, this sort of nonsense. And, and the other the other thing is that and most people don't realise that um, Starmer. Is a member of the Trilateral Commission. Now, people need to look that up on on yeah. Google. The Trilateral Commission. Uh, it's quite quite sinister and and secretive organisation. Uh, and and they're they're behind this new world order and all the rest, which is again very strongly linked to what's happening with COVID. So uh, I I'm no strong imp my my impression of of, of Sam is that, that I I don't think I don't think he he will lead Labour into the uh, next general election, which is about, it's due to be two thousand and twenty-four. Um, I don't see him uh, actually delivering, uh, and um, I think he'll be dumped before the next election. Talk, tell us your view on the vaccine, Brian. <laughs> well, I, 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 I certainly won't be taking it. Um, it it's uh, let's get let's get one or two facts. Um, yeah. Uh, if you look at the number of people who died uh, allegedly uh, with COVID in the, in the UK, um, 99.94% of us have not died. 99.94% of us have not died from COVID, right? Um, why do we need a vaccine? We don't need a vaccine. It's just madness. It's just totally insane. Um, and, and when you look at the, the testing, when you look at the test in this PCR test, we're, we're looking at a test which is uh, gives gives out ninety three percent false positives. Now, people say, "Well, where do you get that figure from?" We get it from Boris. Boris is, is, is on record live on television saying it's it's ninety three percent, and 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 so's the uh, Dominic Raab. Both of them have said the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister both said it's ninety three percent false positive. Yet we, here we have a government. A government spending billions of our money. Boris was talking about spending a hundred billion on testing. A hundred billion on testing. That's about two thirds of the total budget of the NHS. This is madness. This is completely insane. Um, and and what we should be doing, uh, quite clearly, um, uh, and identified by the Barrington Barrington project, is that we should be saying, look, uh, those who want protection, we should protect them. 
but only those who want it. We, we shouldn't we shouldn't force people to have protection. We, we should believe in freedom. If people want to be, I don't want protection. I, you know, I, I'm in a, that, the vulnerable age group. I, I don't want any protection. I don't wear a, a mask. I, I don't bother with all that nonsense. Um, so um, those who want protection should have protection. And the rest of us should be set free to lead our lives. But no, they're, they're, they're hell-bent on this vaccine. Um, which is totally unnecessary, as I said earlier. Um, and uh, you got to wonder, you really have got to wonder uh, what's in that vaccine. Uh, and I don't want to say too much because I don't want your channel being taken off YouTube or anything. But, <laughs> but, um, oh, you've uh, got to be really curious now. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, um, it, it really does make you wonder. Um, and, and what, what's happening? It's quite clear, um, that this has been arranged worldwide governments countries leaders across the world are doing the very same thing at the very same time they're even saying the very same words like build back better build back better they all say it um and it's all it's all it's all people like boris are, are just puppets they're just puppets and, and they're just having the strings pulled they've been told what to say um and they're not the ones behind this and, and and people, some people say, oh well, the government got this wrong. And of course, they've got all this wrong about COVID. But it's it's much more than just getting it wrong. They're working to a plan. They're working to a plan. And their their plan is to ensure that we are all vaccinated, every single one of us in this country and throughout the world. Would you believe seven billion of us? That's what they want. They want us all vaccinated, not just once, but several times. Uh, with a vaccine which has not been properly tested, it's been done in a mad, mad, mad rush, and you got to wonder, you really got to wonder, why are they so keen on this vaccine? Because the only the only possible reason why they've gone on with all this ridiculous testing, which is ninety three percent false positive, is because they wanted to scare people, uh, and this is project fear, the same sort of project fear we had. When we had the uh, the referendum on, on the EU, uh, it's all project fear. Uh, they want to put the fear of God into people, and they say, "Well, look at all these many thousands of people being uh, being tested, they're, they're positive, and and therefore we've got to have the vaccine. We've got to have the vaccine. We've got to have the vaccine." Um, but but it's destroying lives, and 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 the other thing is the lockdowns are killing far far more people than whatever COVID has, has done. You know the, the figures are out there now. It's quite clear, um, and the longer this goes on, the more people will die from it. Um, and um, so they're not saving lives; they're actually ensuring that more people die, more Brits die than than is necessary. Far, far more. There's a report several oh, months ago. The report several months ago where they said that that two hundred thousand would die, two hundred thousand, and and that figure it, it must be greatly increased now. Uh, because that was some time ago. What do you, to me, if, if I, I agree with you, they want the vaccine, nothing else. No other, any, anyone who speaks up, anyone who presents another possible alternative or treatment or a cure is silenced. We're all crackpots, we're all wearing tinfoil hats. It's it, You're a conspiracy theorist to want to know what is going into a syringe of liquid that is being injected into your body. If you want to know... You're a conspiracy theorist. You're mad. I mean, this is, that's the madness, surely. But to me, the obvious winner in all of this is the drug company. And they may well make this an annual vaccination and they will get billions and billions every year out of this. Who do you, what's ultimately behind this? What do you honestly think, heart of hearts, what do you think has gone on here from the very beginning of this till today? What has happened here, do you think? Well, you've got to, to look at the New World Order, the Agenda 2030 from the UN, um, all that sort of, of stuff. People need to research it uh, online. It's quite easy to do so. It's all out there in the open. It's, it's not undercover. And and it, and they've quite said quite clearly what they want to do. They, they want to change the way we live. That's what they, they want to do. They want to change the world. And and they're, they're using they're using COVID as a convenient opportunity. To change, change the world, to change, change the way we live, and even change us with the vaccine. That's that's the sinister, evil part about it. What's in the vaccine can 
could change us as as, as people um and um, so they're hell bent they're totally hell bent on on getting this this, this vaccine into everybody uh, on on a regular and frequent basis um and and that will will uh, and to use that to to change the world the way we live um and um and, and what what they what they done to i mentioned about the 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 loss of life which has been brought down by the lockdown but the, the the way that lockdown has destroyed small business destroyed lives destroyed people's jobs um all totally unnecessary totally on un, unnecessary the, the lockdowns don't save lives or all, all, all the lockdowns do is to just extend the, the period from which the, the, the deaths will occur uh, and and if if you look at the uh, excess deaths over a period of say five years this year hasn't, hasn't been that much out of line with with, with pre previous years that uh, they've weaponized the flu that's what they've done that they've weaponized the flu um and um it, it's very very evil what they've done and people like hancock i, I could throttle him well he's very he, he got all emotional the other day you might have seen but how false was that yeah. how, how false was that I'm not even. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve with this. But is it? I mean, is it? When you say they, are we talking about the United Nations? Are we talking yeah. about UN in conjunction in conjunction with world governments to take yeah. our food away? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we're, talk, we're talking about some, some very powerful people in the world. And I mentioned earlier about the Trilateral Commission. People need to look research the Trilateral Commission, for example. Um, and um, uh, when they, they they meet each year, don't they? And and um, uh, and, and so uh, it's a new world order, which which has been on the, the on the planning books for decades. Um, and and the, the people behind this can't uh, either they can't believe their luck, or, or it has been planned because you know whether whether this has actually been man-made with, with covid and uh, you know there's some dispute about that but uh, whether it has been man-made and whether it was engineered and what was deliberate to, to bring all this in um but there's no no doubt about it because if you look if you if you look at with, with any seriousness about uh, what they're doing it makes no sense at all totally no sense whatsoever if you look at the lockdowns the tears and all this sort of nonsense um it makes no sense so if if it's not making any sense, it, it must be done for another reason. Um, and 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 as you said, the reason the reason is the vaccine. And and why are they so keen on the vaccine? People need to be uh, people need to wake up a bit and, and realize that there's a lot more behind this. And in reality, it's really nothing to do with health. It, it, it's it's about control. That's what it's about. It's about control and changing the the lives that we live changing the worlds we live in and even changing us as, 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 as people um it's, it's very sinister stuff tell me something you said earlier you didn't want to get my youtube channel in trouble which i'm grateful <laughs> for but just a couple of miles what's what are people saying out there about the vaccine first of all do people think this was done deliberately or that they've just taken advantage of the virus and what are they what do people think is in the virus what is what are the theories what are the ideas being thrown around on, on the in the webosphere well uh, what they're saying is that um, with the micro technology that they've got now um that they that they can include in in the vaccine micro technology which uh, they will then be able to monitor uh, us and in, in and in some ways change our dna um so we become different people so that they can they can change dna uh, so we become different people um uh, and, and from their point of view, that they want, they want, they want us to be, to be, be more malleable and, and less like you and me, and, and trouble, <laughs> cause trouble and uh, uh, react against things. They don't want people just to, to be in virtually zombies, transhuman. Um, and and so that that's through the DNA and 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 through the the micro technology, the nano chips, and they they could. Um, they can monitor everything. They can monitor what we're thinking, our heartbeat, everything. Um, it's incredible what they can do. And, and people say, "Oh, well, no, this is fanciful. This is science fiction." It's not science fiction. If you, again, if you want to look it up, it, it's all there. Um, and um, 
I can only conclude that's that's what's behind this, and that's why I would never take the vaccine. It, it's uh, it's very sinister. What happens if they? I mean, they're going to make it very difficult to not take the vaccine, aren't they? I mean, we've already got what we were told was a conspiracy theory two weeks ago. We're already getting these little cards, and the, when ministers are asked, "Is this a COVID passport?" Are you saying that they don't give a straight answer? No. Yeah, they do not give a straight answer about this, and they don't give an answer about it being compulsory either, which no. is also obviously very troubling as well. What what they what they will say is, oh no, it's not compulsory. Don't worry, it's not going to be compulsory. Uh, have no fear. But but you can say you're quite right. You can see it coming, can't you? And and it's already coming. And, and people are saying, well, you can't go on this particular airline unless you've had the vaccine. Or you can't go to this particular event because you not had the vaccine. And and the next the next step will be if you want to keep your job, you've got to have the vaccine. Uh, if if you want to um, if you want to uh, go abroad you got to have the vaccine if you if you want to even and i think it will come to the stage where um, it could well be that you won't be able to leave your house you won't be able to go into a supermarket unless you've had the vaccine you, you won't be able to live oh. properly with, with, uh, unless you've had the vaccine and as i said there's no need for the vaccine it's, it's totally unnecessary um when you've got a death rate which is so low uh, from from covid it's absolutely no no need, and and and, he, and again, you could argue that the because the the vaccine has not been properly tested, it's been a, a mad rush to, to rush it through, and you, you even wonder whether they, they've had it on the stocks before now, and they're now saying that it. Well, look, here it is, um, uh, and so the, they've got this mad rush to to, to bring it in, and uh, the testing has not been properly done. Um, and the the uh, downside of that could be the what will the reaction to the vaccine could be quite serious. And it does. I mean, we people are people are still dismissing it somehow as conspiracy theory. Um, but like you say, it, it, it none of it makes any sense. If you had told us a year ago we would be doing this, no one would have believed you. Um, and there's something else that doesn't make any sense at all in the same vein, which is the last thing I'm going to ask you about, um, Brian, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that doesn't make any sense at all is Joe Biden winning the US election. <laughs> <laughs> no sense. <laughs> he booked every trend. Every trend. Well, well I'm, 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 I'm Marie, I'm, I've got yeah, news. Yeah. I'm Marie, I've got, I've got news for you. Joe Biden did not win the, the presidential election. Um, and uh, again, um, it, it's the biggest stolen election in the history of the world. Um, and um, uh, I, I sincerely hope that uh, the attempts that are being made by by Trump and uh, his acolytes um, will be successful because uh, day after day, more and more is coming out about the way it was stolen, uh, quite clearly stolen, and, and the, the way that the media completely covering it up um, and and say, oh, nothing to see here. There's been, there's been no, there's not been, been no fraud. It's, been no, it, it's just Trump. He's a bad loser. Um, well, he's not a bad loser. He didn't lose, uh, and he won, and and it's been stolen from him. Um, and it's got to be put right. It's really because if it's not put right, then uh, the America, which is the, the most powerful nation in the world, uh, is no better than the Banana Republic. Um, it, it's um, it's just clearly stolen. It, you, you had hundreds of thousands of, of, of marked ballot papers for. For Biden being transported from New York to Pennsylvania and all this sort of nonsense, um, they, they, they all stop counting in the key marginal states. They all stop counting at the same time in the middle of the night uh, because they realised that, that Trump was way ahead, and uh, so we can't have this. So we better stop counting, and which they did. And then they imported all these the uh, ballots marked for Biden, uh, and then they manipulated the computer system, the, the Dominion voting system, uh, which again was wide open to. to to fraud and all this is, is, has come out quite clearly um because i i watched the um the elections on, on the night and um uh, i went to bed at uk time about six six o'clock in the morning which is like one o'clock their time um and trump was way ahead i, I thought well, great you know Trump, trump's won uh, no, no problem but i woke up next morning i thought god he, he what's happened here um and he, he couldn't you couldn't believe it and and so it's it clearly a, a steal um, and um, the, the way that the media just refuse, they refuse to, to actually look at this. They, they should be investigating what really went on. Um, 
and uh, they don't want to know. And so they're, they're all part of the of this grand scheme. They, they they're determined to get rid of Trump because Trump. I think Trump is um, really. It's not just a matter for America. It's a matter for the UK. It's for the for the world. That, that Trump Trump has got to make sure that the win he achieves is actually carried through, and he is he is um, appointed president for another four years on January the twentieth next year. That's what we've got to do because it, it's not just America. It's for the world because Trump at least. Will stand out. He has stood out. He has stood out. He stopped all this um, uh, climate change nonsense. He withdrew the America from 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 that, um, and he's done so many good things, um, not just for America, for the world, uh, and and now for for us to see um, that he had it stolen from him. That can't be allowed to stand. I I mean I everything you see on the mainstream press is a. Trump appeal rejected, 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 yeah. rejected. Whether it be the state courts or today, it was before again we came on, I saw US Supreme Court reject. I mean, it can't be going well. Do you, uh, what, what's, what are you seeing flying around social media? What kind of evidence is there? I, I keep hearing about suitcases of ballots pulled out from under yeah. the table. Tell yeah. us about how seen that. Yes, I've seen all that, and, and that's that's all perfectly correct. And and the, the, there are uh, cases, um, and uh, I I think he will win through. I, I think he will win through, and uh, to, and I think it will probably be done through the Supreme Court. Um, and and it's interesting that so yesterday that Texas, um, who uh, and Texas wasn't is not one of the string states. It, it's a state which uh, Trump won quite easily. But Texas, uh, which is a Republican run, uh, has, has now ma made a, a case to directly to the Supreme Court, saying that um, it's not right what went on in these these other swing states because um, th th they they were in in effect devaluing the the the, the votes in Texas because they, they were shipping in thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of votes and therefore that that devalues the the, the votes of. Uh, of, of the people of Texas, and 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 and, there, and now other states are joining in with Texas. Um, so things are building up quite strongly, um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that he can win through, and he certainly he should win through, uh, and uh, that would be great if he can. Well, it would be. I mean, it would be such a an exposure of what is really going on in this world, particularly with this collusion between the left, whether it be here or in America, and the media. I mean, the media don't investigate, as you said. I think we need someone to investigate the media at this point. They are absolutely corrupt, absolutely corrupt. And this is probably the most destructive example of the lies they tell, the collusion, the cheating, the stealing. And, and as you say, they, they've stolen something so powerful that it's going to take the world in a direction that the people of America did not vote for it to go in. And when if America's democracy goes in that direction, like you say, it's no better, well, it's no better than this country at this moment. Until we get Brexit, we're a banana republic as well, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but, but, but what's, what's really interesting as well, which has been revealed, is that um, Trump is not only fighting the Democrats, he's not only fighting the mainstream media, he's yeah. fighting a lot of people in his own party, for yeah. God's sake. Um, yeah. And so uh, most most of these swing states, most of them are run by Republicans. And, and instead of standing up and saying, oh, right, yes, it was stolen and we will now put it right. They say, oh, no, no, nothing to see here. Move on. Uh, and, and these are so-called uh, Republicans. Um, so he's fighting people in his own party. Uh, you know, and he's had to put up with this for four years. I, I do, I do admire the the man because he, he has had to put up with all this, all this nonsense about uh, Russia and uh, when when he was first elected, uh, and then they tried to impeach him over Ukraine, and it was all nonsense. Um, and and but he put up with it and he won through. But now um, he's got his own people in his own party, and I think when he does. When he does win through, and he is back for another four years, uh, there's going to be a mighty big change in the Republican Party because um, most of the most of these uh, so-called Republicans uh, who who have not stood by uh, by, by Trump, uh, I'm sure they will be uh, uh, when their time for a re-election it comes. There will be a primary, and and they will be voted out in the primary, and they will no longer be a Republican candidate. But you can't go on. Uh, with with a political system where the the, the party where the pre of the president doesn't back the president and and that is what's happening now that a large number 
of of the Republican politicians, the elected politicians, Republicans, are not supporting Trump, and that, that's scandalous in my view. Well, it's a swamp, Brian. There are lots of Republicans in that swamp he wants to drain, and they no more want him to drain it than than Democrats do. He really is up against the system. He yeah. really is to have someone like him was is so important. And I'm, I'm I'm probably less optimistic about him winning through, but I, I sincerely, sincerely hope that you're right. Um, predictions for 2021. Brian. <laughs> What's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like I like to say that the lockdown will end, but uh, you know I, I've been saying that for months now, and it, it hasn't ended. Um, so I yeah, I don't know. We we know that this this lockdown is due to keep going at least till spring, aren't we? Because um, uh, all, all the various compensations that the chancellor has put in place are until the spring, so th they're planning for the lockdowns to keep going till till the spring. Um, in, in in my view, the the lockdown should be finished today. Uh, there's no need. No point to them. They're, no, they're, they're doing doing far more damage than, than any good they might do. And it's so very very depressing in every which way. I mean, it's it's the mm. run of Christmas. The shops should be packed. It should be mm. the bars should be packed. We should be having Christmas parties and 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 yet and, and everyone is just sitting at home. It's, it's almost bargaining with the government as to how many days we can have with our family. Yeah, this is an extraordinary situation that we're in. Yeah, and, and also the, the the various religious bodies, like the churches, for example, they just cow town to the government, um, totally cow town to them. Um, and, and again, you, you go about Christmas and, and no church services or church services where you can't sing carols and all this sort of craziness. It, it's just it's, it's bar the whole thing's balmy. It really is. It really is, and we'd never, we would never have believed it if people told us that no. this would be so when i asked you i was a little bit tongue-in-cheek and asking for predictions for 20 years because i have no no one can possibly guess what's next i don't even i can't even predict 2020 i mean <laughs> not yet <laughs> and god knows what's going to happen between now and the end of the year brian thank you ever so much for coming on um this evening i really do appreciate it and we'd like to get you on again on a regular basis if that's yeah. all right yeah, no, um, I, I'm always very pleased to speak to you, Anne Marie. And you, Brian. And you. Thank you very much. And um, have a fantastic Christmas. You too. It'll probably be a quiet one, but try and enjoy it anyway. And we'll see. I'll see you back here in January. Yeah. And we'll see what's, uh, what insanity we have to deal with then. I look forward to it. Okay. Thanks a lot, Brian. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Bye bye. Right. And thanks everyone for watching. Um, it's so, I, honestly, whenever I have these conversations, I just think it's so crazy what's going on. And, and as I say, we would never have believed it, but here we are. Okay. I'll be back next Thursday with, um, well, let's see what's going on at the time. Um, uh, but have a good weekend. I'll see you with more streams between, between now and my live stream on Monday. Have a good weekend. Look after yourselves and uh try and stay sane through the madness so i know that isn't easy take care everyone bye bye